So today I have done something that I've never done. Um, I've lived in Texas in the same area for over 35 years. And I have never gone hiking in what is essentially my own backyard. So I'm here today in the Sam Houston National Forest. I'm going to be hiking the Sam Houston North Wilderness Loop. It's around nine miles. It should take several hours. It's a gorgeous day. It's about 85 degrees. Humidity is about 50%. Mostly sunny. I've got my map. I'm parked at the trailhead. And I'm pretty excited about getting going. So I'm about 10 minutes in. Five groups have already passed me heading back to the trailhead. Gorgeous day. Absolutely gorgeous. Trail's a little overgrown. Very easy right now. It's going to be a great day. Looks like I've come across the first bit of water today. Not much, but a little. So the trail, the trail here is going through a washout. There's some water. We haven't had rain in a few days, so this isn't bad, but I can't imagine what this looks like after a big storm. And we head back up that way. So we're gonna be going straight and following the wilderness trail. This is just an offshoot of the Lone Star hiking trail that goes for over hundred miles. I just wanted to comment, it's a beautiful day today. Another one of the ravines, big tree fell over in a very shiny spot. So I've crossed over several gullies in the past few minutes. I don't know if you can tell, this is one of the smaller ones. But several couples have found beautiful picnic sites along these washouts. It's amazing. Um, hear the birds, you can hear the wind blowing in the canopy, but there's no wind down here on the ground. Wish there was just a little bit. Just had someone pass me that was wearing surgical mask. And I found it quite intriguing because there's really no one out here. And the coronavirus isn't free floating in the air, but some people can do what they want. About an hour into the hike at this point. So, another washout, but the interesting thing here is, this is fresh water, or clear water, like from a spring. And what's really even more fascinating, and I don't know if it's going to show up on video, but we have some little itty bitty swimmers. Let's get closer. There we go, there's one right in the center. There's a lot more down over here. It's really pretty. Uh, 
I'm about an hour and a half into the walk, into the hike. It's still beautiful out here. It's been relatively flat past 20, 30 minutes or so. Quiet. Uh, no noises from civilization. Wind in the canopy, birds. That's about it. It's just very peaceful. And I needed this today. Mile five. I don't know if that's what I've done or if that's where I have to go. I'm almost at the halfway point. I'll have to check my map. Speaking of maps, unless I'm missing something, I'm very disappointed about the state's uh, National Park website in regards to hiking trails, or should I say the National Forest, not National Park, National Forest's website for hiking trails. It seems like every hiking trail that you need to view information on where the trail heads are, it's easier to find them on third-party websites than it is the state's website, which is kind of disappointing. Um, I'm going to have to do some more research on that because so I would like to make a couple of hikes a month. Um, I think that would be fun. I need it. Um, doesn't look like I'm going back to work until at least the 1st of July. I am working from home, but as far as going back to campus, and my gut feeling tells me that could stretch out to September 1st. Well, we'll just have to see. Anyway, enjoy the scenery. Okay, a couple of observations today. Um, one, there aren't very many people out here, but everyone that uh, I have come across have been fantastic. They've been very nice, very pleasant, except for the one wearing the N95 mask. She thought I had the bubonic plague, but that's okay. Um, another thing, there's absolutely no trash on this trail. Uh, no cigarette butts, no cans, no bottles, no candy wrappers, nothing. Uh, this reminds me of when I was in Japan over the holidays. It's beautiful out here. Um, another one is absolutely no sign of large animals. Um, no boar, deer, rabbit, squirrel, coyote. I don't see any prints. Um, no droppings, um, rooting, nothing, which I find very interesting. I haven't even seen any uh, animal trails in the brush. You know, even back on, back home on the property, I've got animal tracks everywhere. You know, everything from rabbit to bobcat. Nothing out here. It's getting humid outside. Um, don't know what the temperature is, but it's probably close to 90. Very little wind down here under the canopy, but I can hear it 
pretty well up above. Anyway, I'm gonna pull out a protein bar. Got about just under four miles to go. And uh, we'll see you in a bit. So throughout the hiking, the trees along the trail have these reflective white steel plates on them, nailed into trees, trail markers. And the Forest Service has done a really good job on keeping these up to date. It looks like this one's not that old. And they're all over the place. There. And coming up here. I just happened to notice the frequency on this part of the trail because it happens to zigzag back and forth. There's another one. There's a couple more. Because if you look on the ground, there's really no definitive trail, for lack of a better term, in this area. There's another one. And then here we get back to the trail where you can tell it's a trail. Just wanted to share that part with you. Coming up to another wooden walkway. I don't want to call it a bridge. I don't know. Is it a bridge or is it just a walking path? And then you can see the debris piled up here, getting where the water is going that way. And it looks like there used to be another walking path. You can see, let's see, there we go. There, there, here, some here, going up. Okay, so I'm heading east, leaving Little Lake Creek Wilderness, crossing Park Road 231, and heading right over there. Let's 
south side of 231. North side of 231. And that's where we came from. And we'll continue east this way. Now, when we crossed 231 a few hours ago, there was no fence or any barricade like this to keep motorcycles, side-by-sides, or four-wheelers out. And here there was. They must have had a problem. Anyway, the canopy on this side is a lot more open. I'm getting a lot more sun. I mean, it's it's different. I'm wondering if they had a controlled burn on this side at one time. Okay, well, just a couple hundred yards back, I talked about how it looks like there could have been a controlled burn here because it's so much more open up. I'm finding stumps like this that are burned. Um, there's a big root ball that's scarred. There's dark char marks on the base of some of the trees. Um, here's another stump. There's another felled tree that's got fire damage. So yeah, it looks like uh, there was either a controlled burn or they hit a wildfire out here. Who knows? I saw this last 30 minutes of the trail. It's relatively flat terrain. A um, couple of big logs you gotta go over. But I took the loop in a counterclockwise direction headed west, south, east, and I'm going north right now. But heading west out of the trailhead for three to four miles, there was a lot of washouts that you had to scramble through, for lack of a better term. I mean, they were pretty well dug out. Uh, roots for steps, uh, boards were needed. But this is... Uh, a nice finish to the hike. I'm glad I went counterclockwise because I don't know if I would have wanted to finish the last two to three miles of the hike going up and down 15 foot washouts. So this is nice. And since it's a little bit thinned out here, there's more ground wind. So it's, it's a little bit cooler, but it's a lot more direct sun as well. So it's a little bit different. It's very nice. I'm very glad that I did this. It's a great day to spend my Saturday. And I passed my first people on the trail, a couple and their dog. And before that, it had been almost four miles before I had seen anybody. So there's hardly anybody out here. more evidence of fire. You can see the blackened trunks. Again, I don't know if this was natural or a controlled burn.
So for the past 20 minutes, I've been walking along this deep root washout. I think in my last segment, I spoke too soon because I'm gonna have to cross that. I don't know how far up. But you can get an idea. Let's walk over to the edge. It's not that bad. Uh, there's very little water in it. There's probably log or wood across it to get over. Okay. So, it looks like I can walk over this bridge that um, has seen better days. It's solid, but boy, oh boy. Swamp monsters probably living in there. Starting to hear a little bit of civilization. I've got 10 minutes left to, and I'll be back at the trailhead. No more wind. It's all up in the canopy. Okay. 0.7 miles to go. Let's do it. Okay, straight path. Probably a quarter mile to go or so. It's 3.05. I'm slowing off my pace a little bit. I expected to be at the trailhead by now. So, 3.15. See if we can do that. Okay, it is 3.15, back in the car. This is a great hike. I needed it. Um, it was good for me. I feel good. Um, even though I brought three liters of water with me, I feel a little dehydrated. Um, my hips hurt. <laughs> my hips really hurt. Um, I'll take some ibuprofen when I get back home. Um, overall, I would do this again, probably earlier in the morning. Um, it did get hot. Let's see, the dash is showing. It says 84 and I'm parked in the shade. Um, it's hotter than that outside and the humidity has come up. Last week it was averaging 30, 40, 50%. It's probably 70 or 80% now. I'm, I'm feeling it. Anyway, um... I think it was a little over eight miles. I gotta check Google Maps when I get home. But yeah, I would do this again next weekend to see how the weather is, how I'm feeling, and maybe we'll go just do something around Lake Livingston. Anyway, thanks for being with me. Hope you enjoyed the video.